That right there is Jaguar's first electric vehicle. It's called the I-Pace, and with a starting price of around $70,000, it's going to have some tough competition from a little company in California called Tesla. But with nearly 400 horsepower and over 500 pound-feet of torque, this I-Pace could be in a very exciting car to drive. We've come to Portugal to find out just how exciting. Let's take a quick look at the exterior of the I-Pace. What I like about this from the outset is that it's an attractive EV. For the longest time, automakers keep thinking that electric vehicles have to look like nerdmobiles. Fortunately, this doesn't. It looks striking, it looks good, but it also looks different. Crucial to that is these 22-inch wheels. These are optional, and they're super tall, although they may not look like it given how large these wheel wells are. They're skinny too, and that's gonna help a little bit with efficiency, but pay attention to the carbon fiber inserts in the metal here, and that's to reinforce the sportiness that Jaguar likes to imbue in all of its vehicles. When it comes to the overall size and proportion of the I-Pace, it's similar to that of a compact luxury SUV, not unlike the F-Pace. It's a little bit different though. It's shorter in height and wider, even though it's the same length as those kind of vehicles, and that helps it give it a sportier look. Also too, the wheels are pushed further to the edges of the vehicle because they can do that when you don't have to worry about where you're placing a gasoline engine. At the floor is a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack that feeds two electric motors, one between the front wheels and the other on the rear. That makes the I-Pace all wheel drive, though there's no mechanical connection between the two axles. One of the things that's hard to answer is whether this is a car or an SUV. It's kind of a mixture of both design elements and that helps it with some functionality, although you can't expect to tow a boat with it either. It doesn't really matter though, it hasn't for the Tesla Model X, which is kind of between an SUV and a minivan and that thing's enjoyed plenty of success. What matters though is how this drives. Behind the wheel of the I-Pace, first impressions are strong. Like many electric vehicles, as soon as you dig into that accelerator, you feel a satisfying amount of power. And that's because this thing has over 500 pound-feet of torque that arrives instantaneously the moment you touch the accelerator. We have to touch, we have to call it an accelerator because it's no longer a gas pedal. But when you have a bit of opening in the road and you can squeeze into it, immediately you have very, very strong power that always feels good. But that's a typical feature of electric vehicles. When you come off the go pedal, you get into a really aggressive regenerative braking, and that's when the motors are recuperating energy. You can adjust how much they do that, and in its most aggressive setting, you can almost drive the I-Pace with one pedal and only use the brake pedal when you really need to stop quickly. That feels good. Jaguar is claiming a zero to 60 time of four and a half seconds. It would be faster if this thing didn't weigh so much. We're talking about 4,800 pounds with the base car. With this option with the 22 inch wheels and a couple other luxury features, I'm betting it's gonna weigh closer to 5,000 pounds. That's a lot of weight for a sporty vehicle, though that's less than the larger but similarly priced Tesla Model X. But it's also what you have to have if you need the range this thing offers. Speaking of, you get about 240 miles on a full charge. And that's good enough and comparable with modern EVs you'll see elsewhere in the market. A full charge will take about 13 hours, something you'd wanna do overnight. But as we're learning with EVs, you typically only charge you about 80, 90%. So if you were to charge only to about 80%, Jaguar's claiming that's gonna take closer to 10 hours. If you have access to a DC fast charger, that 80% fill can take less than an hour and a half. What I like about this is, despite it being as heavy as it is, and despite riding on 22 inch wheels, the steering feels very good. It's nice and tight. You know, not maybe in terms of feel, but in terms of accuracy, I feel like I can easily guide this vehicle down the road. The ride quality is kind of what you'd expect given the weight and the tire size. You feel the bumps, and this is intended to be a sportier vehicle, so it, it's gonna react a bit more firmly to road impressions. Still, the return is a general sportier feeling that's satisfying and kind of what Jaguar is aiming to get out of the car. Visibility is generally pretty strong with the exception of the rear window, which is small and steeply raked. And with the head rests up, it can, they can impinge on your view a little bit. But generally the side view mirrors and the side glass and the front windshield, it's easy to see out of. The dash extends seemingly quite a bit ahead of you. So it can make trying to gauge where the front of the car is, uh, it takes a little bit of time to learn it. You have a ton of headroom in this vehicle. The roof is surprisingly high up and that's 
the result of this car's SUV style design and proportions. A lot of headroom, good amount of shoulder and leg room, and that same goes for the back seat. So this should feel comfortable for a family around town. In front of me, I have a head-up display that tells me my speed. I have a digital gauge cluster that's pretty easy to read. And I've got two screens here to control entertainment navigation and seat controls and climate control as well. There's still some physical controls which make operating the vehicle easy. But when it comes to the touch-sensitive stuff, like adjusting some of the features on this lower third screen, it can be a little frustrating to kind of take your eyes off the road and try to adjust those while you're driving. Similar to the entertainment system, though it's powerful and car carries a lot of features, it can be a little slow, and I'm not sure if that's the result of processing power or the fact that they want to show off the pretty graphics as the screen transitions from one screen to the next. The seats themselves are comfortable and supportive. I feel like I could sit in this and drive this for as long as the range will let me go, and I think I'd have a pretty good time too. What you realize after driving a number of electric vehicles, and even powerful ones like this and various Teslas, is that they all kind of drive similarly when you talk about how they accelerate and how they brake. Gasoline engines have so much personality in the way they sound and in the way they deliver power and the vibrations they make through the vehicle, that when you don't have it, you realize how much of an impact they had on the driving experience. Jaguar's trying to deliver a similar experience, and they have an active sound generator that when you put it in its most dynamic setting will actually give you a little bit of fake engine noise. Let's turn it on right now. When I switch it over to dynamic and roll on the go pedal, you'll hear what sounds like a mixture of a gasoline engine and something else. It's kind of spaceshipy. Let's do it right now. It's an interesting sound. There's some low-end thrum, some low-frequency thrum that's kind of like a four-cylinder or uh, more like a four-cylinder than not, and also this high-frequency pitch that's interesting. A lot of the stuff there is fake. It's generated through sound design through the stereo, but it does attempt to give some personality to an otherwise powerful, just another powerful EV. I like the, I like the idea, and the sound is just modest enough, just minor enough, where it's not overbearing, it's not obnoxious, it's not obvious to most people that it's fake, I would imagine. If you know what you're looking for, if you know what you're driving, you, would, you could tell. But when you roll it back to calm, how Jaguar describes it, and you just cruise along, you do hear a bit of noise from the electric motors. Some of that high-pitched chatter isn't too unlike what you would hear from the Jetsons car. And the driving sensation, it's kind of just like an all-wheel drive car that can accelerate very quickly. When you find some corners, you know, this thing is not a sports car and it's not going to behave like one, but it does have a certain enthusiasm that feels nice. That driving enthusiasm, the enjoyable acceleration and handling, is exactly what you'd expect from a Jaguar, regardless of whether it's electric or not. And that may be the I-Pace's biggest success, that it still represents the history and relevance of its brand while bringing it to the future. Like the Teslas before it, the I-Pace is yet another step in a paradigm shift for the automotive landscape at large, but for Jaguar too. We'll of course have to get one in the United States and drive it on our roads and do our instrumented testing to give a full analysis. But at the outset, it looks like Jaguar has been very clever, delivering a very strong, stylish, and standout luxury EV. If you like what you saw, keep it tuned right here, and be sure to visit Edmunds.com.